we can simply imagine memory as being an array of bytes. So over here I'm going to write the index ind indices of this array or the address starting from 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dot 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 dot. And over here I could write the bytes located at this address. So I could write A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, E, F, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are just random bytes that I made up. Made up. The addresses don't necessarily have to be initialized with these bytes. But, uh, but if memory addressing was this easy, I would have stopped by now. But in MS-DOS, it's not really this easy. So right now, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to run debug and do a dump command. So you could see the contents of memory. And over here we have uh, over here we have the address of where these bytes of are located in memory, and the address is written in a really weird way, such that you have like two 16-bit registers next to each other. And if you have two 16-bit registers, if the processor was using two 16-bit registers to refer in addressing memory, couldn't it? address up to 4 gigabytes of memory um, well it turns out that uh, well wasn't 640 kilobytes enough ought to be enough for everybody so if we like type this in with the without the colon into the hex form decimal we have a astonishingly huge number of bytes this is like 596 megabytes and back then uh, obviously they didn't have that much and because the processor was only supposed to address up to a megabyte and nobody and, they, and nobody could even reach the megabyte limit when the 8086 was introduced so yeah, so this is a very large number, and this is now not how memory is addressed in the segment offset notation. How memory is addressed in segment offset notation is to get the physical location, the real location of where you are in memory, you would multiply the left-hand side, the, the number at the left of the colon, by 10 hex, and add it by 100. So you would do uh, if, let me clear this screen right here so in this case with this address we have 2386 2387 segment and offset 100 to convert it to its physical form you would multiply this side by 10 hex and add 100 to it so you would do 2387 times 10 so it's just adding a zero and then plusing it with 0 100 so so if we add these together we get 0 7 9 3 2 so this is where the where our bytes are located in memory this is where the byte 0 f 0 0 b 9 are located in memory so if I do um and, if, and I said here to convert uh, the, this to its physical form, you will multiply by 10. So I think it would make sense if uh, make sense that 2397 segment 2397 with offset uh, of zeros would refer to the same location in memory. So let's see if that's true. And if we do a dump command 2397. We should get the same result. So, so we have zero f zero zero. So it's like all the same exact bytes. And if you ask me why did Intel um, adopted this scheme for MS, actually it's not Intel Intel who did it. It's MS DOS who adopted this scheme. And if you ask me why, I think it was because the segments were supposed to break up programs into different. Um, you would 
use segments to take advantage of having different routines for a program so that each routine had its own segment to work with and they do not have to interfere with, with each other well at least that's my reasoning but um but uh but yeah they just stuck with this scheme and I'm sorry to say you have to adopt you have to adapt to it, not adopt to it, adapt uh, if we clear this. So you could see that um, if we write the physical location 2397, right? 23970, uh, hour and 23971, 23972, dot dot dot. Um, you would have the byte zero f zero zero b nine eight a so so zero f zero zero and b nine and then this goes on so like your two three nine seven zero th hex th byte in memory is zero f or I should say uh, I should say um. I should say your 145,776th byte in memory is 0F.